a devotion for the Sunday after the Ascension. Our Gospel text is John chapter 15, beginning with the 26th verse. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming, that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you, because they have not known me or the Father. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. And thus far our text. Our Lord Jesus Christ warns that persecution will come, but assures us that the Holy Spirit brings comfort. He says, These things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. As long as the Christ was present in the flesh, the devil and the world directed their attacks at him. Now that he has ascended, they turn their attention to us, his children. The time is coming, he says, that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. He said this not to cause us fear, but to show the blindness of the wicked. They do not know God. If they did, they would not hate God's children. But in their blindness, they hate us with a religious hatred, driving themselves on to further acts of destruction because they believe it to be an act of worship. As lies do violence to the truth, we should not be surprised when unbelievers commit violence against us and that with religious zeal. For our part, this should move us to pity. They can do nothing lasting to us. Our souls are safe with Christ, and our bodies will be resurrected on the last day. As the 56th Psalm prays, What can flesh do to me? Therefore, all the hatred and violence of the wicked is to their own hurt, though they do not know it. Unfortunately, while we should feel pity, the reality is that we feel fear and anger. But our Lord Jesus Christ is the solution. He sends the Holy Spirit to comfort and to teach us, to preserve us in the one true faith. He will testify of me, Christ says. Therefore, the most comforting message is that of the only begotten Son of God, who became man in order to suffer and die for the sins of the world, and to rise from the dead for the salvation of mankind. This is the chief article of our faith, as St. Paul summarizes it in Romans chapter 4. He was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. This gospel message is for the salvation of the unbeliever and for the preservation of the Christian. And the gospel never changes. Although the Holy Spirit continues to apply the gospel to us in new ways. We always need the forgiveness of sins, because we remain sinners in the flesh. But there is a difference between the repentance of the unbeliever and the repentance of the believer. The unbeliever has never known forgiveness. So when he repents through the work of the Holy Spirit, it is truly life-changing. 
When the Christian repents, it is not a matter of going from death to life. It is a matter of living, of walking in the life he has received. As our Lord explains at the Last Supper when he says, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. From the Catechism, we learn that we have three enemies, the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh. The Gospel teaches us that the Christ conquered the devil when he rose from the dead. Likewise, that in his death he paid for the sins of our flesh, and we are forgiven. Today's text particularly concerns our second enemy, the world. Our Lord says, They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. We are rightly grieved when the unbelieving world commits violence, especially violence against God's saints. Whether it is physical violence, or violence done against the truth through sinful teaching and life, this is the fruit of unbelief. For which reason our Lutheran symbols teach that unbelief is the greatest sin, from which all others flow. But our Lord warns of these things in advance so that we would not be caught off guard. He says, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. We must not fear the violence of the world, but look to our Lord Jesus Christ, who has overcome the world for us. As he says, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. How has the Christ overcome the world? When reviled, he did not revile in return. But as it is written of him, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Moreover, he prayed for his enemies, desiring their salvation, as he prayed on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. In all his suffering, the world could not tempt him to sin, even against his enemies. He did not curse or hate but died for them willingly. In so doing, he shows that the world has no power over the soul. Neither can they destroy our soul, which has been made new in baptism. They cannot cause us to sin, nor destroy our faith, nor our salvation, which are safe and secure in the Christ. But the world does have some power over our bodies. The Christ was beaten beyond recognition, as Isaiah prophesied. His visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Everything they could do to his body, they did. But in the end, it made no difference because he rose again in the body, glorified. And the only scars he had were the ones he chose to keep. The world can torture and destroy our bodies in this life, but we will be resurrected. In this way, the world can do nothing to us in the end. Our souls are safe in the Christ, and our bodies will be resurrected 
whatever they do. This is the comfort that comes from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.